Hey guys, this is Fable from Face World Media. This is a follow-up video for on Zoom. Last time I talked about how to sign up for on Zoom, go through their webinar, but it just got approved. So I want to show you every step of the way to go from creating an event all the way to launching the event, uploading all the assets, how to register, how to gift a ticket to somebody else, and of course, PayPal integration. Let me tell you the real reason why I'm in such a hurry to do this because on Zoom is the one and only dedicated marketplace for all the Zoom events. It's still very new in beta. A lot of people sort of know about it, but they haven't really gone through the process. So I want you to definitely get on this train. There are not a ton of events. I can prove it to you right now. So, and I'll walk you through every step. This is a longer tutorial because you guys have given me the feedback to not skip any step, not, you know, super speed up everything. You want to see the screen, you want to see what's involved. Thank you so much to this community for allowing me to build a career on YouTube and bring so many more tutorials and educational content out there for creative entrepreneurs like yourself. If you haven't hit subscribe, please do right now. Hey, before we get started today, this video is sponsored by Restream. Restream allows you to be everywhere and stream your content right on 30 plus social media platforms. Thank you guys for watching and let's go back to today's video. Hi there, this is Fei Wu from Phase World Media. Welcome to another episode, part two on, on Zoom. So I just got this email from Zoom confirming that my on Zoom host access has been granted. And I want to show you guys this email, this subject line, it seems like this is going to be the format there they'll be following for a little while. As part of the email that you get the confirmation, you also get the event host FAQs, getting started guide, things like that. And what I want to do in this video is to kind of show you all the screens and the login information that you will be seeing uh, before you're fully granted access. Now, as part of this email, interestingly enough, they're showing you some of the best practices. You can freeze frame right now or pause if you want to read all the details, but these are the controls that you will have available once you start your Zoom meeting. And as you can see, some of the things that they're asking you to do is consider security, extra security, disable this, that, you know, share screen, chat, rename, unmute. And the reason is when you think for a second, when you invite other people to Zoom and if it's more private and exclusive, you don't really have to worry too much about people hopping on last minute or last second. But now, you know, as you are um, giving people full access to your events through on Zoom, remember it's a marketplace and anybody can search and filter on uh, meetings and events and they can just join. Uh, so there you go. So these are the things that I'm going to show you. You can freeze frame and figure out what's most appropriate for your meeting uh, and just go ahead with the get started guide right here. First time set up. So there's some requirements from Zoom. Just make sure you up upgrade uh, Zoom to the latest. With that said, let's get started. Let me go to on Zoom. Again, the exact URLs on.zoom.us I'll include in the description below. As you can see, I'm already logged in. Otherwise, you will want to uh, make sure that you are logged in. So number one, I'm going to just pretend I want to create an event right away by clicking on create. And look, before I can create anything, I need to agree, review and accept community standards. So there you go. So I'm going to just scroll through real quick. Again, you can Again, you can freeze frame on any of the things that I'm showing you on the screen. I know this is, you know, most of us don't really read any of it, but I actually think it's generally a very good idea to just go through and make sure uh, that your events are aligned with this. Otherwise, you know, you put a, put in all the effort and there you may be risking uh, having the event taken down. So, all right. so. It's quite long, so I'm going to check the checkbox, click on accept. And here by default, as you can see, they're pulling the image that you use for your Zoom account and your Zoom email host description. Uh, so, you know, uh, let's see, can I continue? Look, so what I'm going to do as a quick start is that I'm just going to grab some ex existing description um, and then just pull it out there. So let's see. Okay. So I'm just going to you know, grab a description. 
as you can see, uh, oh, interesting. There are 350 character limit. So you want to make sure to be concise, short and sweet. Continue. You do have to connect your PayPal business account. It looks like this is an optional step means a lot of you guys are probably creating free events to, to begin with. So you don't have to do that. But for the sake of showing the stuff, I'm going to actually connect. All right, I'm going to quickly summarize step three. As you can imagine, connecting through PayPal, PayPal will require you to log in before you grant on Zoom permission. So uh, as usual, if you have ever done this with PayPal and Stripe, it, they do ask you a series of questions, including the nature of your business, if it's private or public, your address. It also requires a customer service email address as well as a phone number. And that's it. Your PayPal business account has been connected. Host profile is ready. Confirmation has been sent. Let's go ahead and create events. So we're finally here in the step. You'll notice a lot of similarities between creating on Zoom events as opposed to just regular Zoom events. On Zoom did confirm limitations such as right now, as you can see, when you create weekly events, even though you can select oh Monday, Friday or Tuesday, Saturday, however, you will not be able to create events that occur at different times of the week. For example, Monday at 10 a.m. and then Friday at 2 p.m. I actually find this to be a significant limitation because I'm already running into events where I need that level of sophistication. Let's take a look at event options. These event options, again, also a little bit similar uh, to the Zoom meetings. You have a list of events in the Zoom directory. So that's interesting. You could create private events that are actually not listed as part of on Zoom. Here are event securities. You can allow attendees to change the screen name or share their screen. Lastly, cloud recording. You can enable or disable live streaming as well as record a meeting on cloud. So if you're happy with everything, you can just click go ahead and schedule. So let me um, just use this test right here. And what I like about this part is it gives you the option to create main event images. And this is going to be the default one. Always is going to be the first one. And then you can add two more images. And I would always recommend you guys to consider using Canva. I will list a link below to create these custom made, you know, the perfect sized images. And there's a maximum uh, image limitation, size limitation here. I also like the idea of a YouTube link because I can imagine someone like myself, um, you know, whether you are a YouTuber or not, doesn't matter. You might have a video that you created prior to the event or even you know, something it could be very short, something you get done through Upwork or Fiverr. You can just upload it to YouTube and include a link here and you can write more details like such as participant requirements, sponsors, uh, or for some of you creators out there, you can um, use this event. If it's a lead gen, then you can include details as to when the next series of events are going to be or how to make product purchases or include links to some of the information you may be referencing uh, as part of the event or things for people to study ahead of time. So you get the idea. Um, so I'm going to just uh, go ahead and just paste. This is consider Laura Ipsum and contact information. Everything is pre-populated, save and continue. And here is where you can specify whether you want to have free versus paid tickets. 
And right now my event capacity is 100 people participants per event. You can actually upgrade and include up to 1000 people. So I'm going to show you this page real quick. As you can see, uh, there are different levels and where I have right now is basically pro and I'm paying monthly. So this is the price. I switch over to monthly for you guys to see. All right, with that said, I'm going to make this plan. I'm going to make this event free and uh, the total quantity for each event here, you know, you can definitely increase it. Um, but even though I can say the quality is, I just typed in a hundred thousand is going to then limit this to um, basically a hundred participants. And it's interesting. It's at 99 because I myself also is counted towards that participant number and description here. You can just type in blah, blah, control who can register for the event. Uh, we didn't have this before. So uh, you can say users from specific domains, such as, you know, anybody who worked for Google, that will be google.com. Anybody who works for FaceWorld, be faceworld.com. You can enter domain separated by a comma. So I could do something like google.com, faceworld.com as an example, right? You can just save that. You can specify a message for confirmation. This is optional because you will get a default one. Thank you for your purchase. We look forward to your participation. So let me go ahead and just publish this. You guys know this is obviously a fake event. So review your event details, um, date and time cancellation policy cannot be changed once a ticket is purchased. Uh, so that, that is important to note. And also looks like every week on Monday, Friday until November 23rd. So that's it. And for the sake of this, I'm actually going to go ahead and just limit this event to, so I'm going to click on save and nobody's going to sign up from phase world and publish, publish. So here your event has been published. You can view the event page back to the event list. You can immediately from here, add this event to your own Google calendar, Yahoo, Outlook, I calendar. You know, you can actually just copy the link here. Sometimes I find that to be pretty helpful. If I'm going to kind of drop this in an email or publish directly on social media, uh, or I can click on, let's go to the event page. This is what this event looks like. You can favorite it. Um, you can share it as I mentioned. So the share, uh, from here, let's take a look at what it looks like on Facebook. I bet it's going to grab whatever the default image is, as you can imagine, it's very boring right now and share this event as usual. So we have, um, messenger, Twitter, LinkedIn, and email. There's that. About this event, this is a training for anyone who's hosting events on, on Zoom for the first time about it. Um, and this is a bit about me, about the host. And here, as you can see, these are the categories and tags selling out soon. So, uh, on Zoom knows how many tickets there, there are left. So I'm going to click on that. All right. So I'm going to say purchase one ticket, my ticket. So that's my email place order. This is the confirmation that I'm getting. You get a confirmation number details. So view tickets. This page is kind of interesting and there's an additional feature that's called gifting a ticket. So if you cannot make it, there is a way to easily gift this to someone else. So whether it's a free event or a paid event, you can do that. but here you can also cancel your order or you can contact the host. So let's go ahead and click on contact host that triggers an email. I can also go ahead and just cancel the order here. Before I do that, I want to show you the list of confirmation and also the gift ticket email and what it looks like. So every step of the way, as you're setting up your zoom, uh, host profile, your PayPal account, you're getting information all the way through. And your event, as soon as it's been published, you do also get a confirmation. And here is where you can easily add it to your calendar. You get an order confirmation as a user. Again, this is just all me playing around. Lastly, this is the email I want to show you, which is Faye has gifted a ticket to you from Faye Wu to Faye Wu. And here your friend, if you're forwarding this to a friend or a colleague, that person is able to look at all the details related to the event. So definitely on zoom still seems to be a little beta. I'm not sure about the language they're using here. Some of that is confusing, but 
Now, as an event organizer, as well as, as a user, you have all of these options. You can go ahead and create an event, create a new event, manage your event right here. So you can start it or um, you can start your meeting or your event directly from here. And also from here, you can cancel, duplicate the event. So also under my events, you can see a summary of the total events uh, that you created, a number of tickets that's been sold, gross income, uh, events minutes and host rate and all that interesting cancellation policy reports. There's some more detailed reports here as well, uh, dictating the same information what, with some of the, the graphs here. So lastly, the tickets. Anything that you have a ticket to, uh, you have access to what's upcoming, what's in the past, all the orders that you've made, and any of your favorites. Let's take a look at all events. So right now, these are the main categories for on Zoom, and there's also something called other. And here are the featured events. A little bit reminds me of iTunes and Apple Podcasts, sort of. And you have your upcoming, you have your new, and uh, look at the, the new ones, it's fascinating. So this gentleman here created all of these events and it's all being featured in order. So just by looking at this, I gotta say that, you know, every time I, re if I refresh the page once again, it's still there. So I would say today, right now, is a really great opportunity for you guys to consider joining the OnZoom platform because I just suspect that people are not swamping this platform with events left and right because otherwise, you know, your new page will not be taken over by just a few users. Let me go ahead and click on view all. So these are the events that are happening today. Uh, that's fascinating. And here are the events happening tomorrow. A little bit more, but that's it. Like, look, fewer than 10 events on all of on Zoom. I'm filtered currently on all categories here and all tickets. So, wow. All right, now there's an opportunity to be discovered, actually. I will be very interested to know what the traffic is like, you know, are the events selling out? What are some of the analytics and stats? But then again, I don't work for Zoom, so I won't be able to pull any of that information. I'm just really interested in what that looks like. And here, well, they also have something called top user picks. So what it means is when an event gets a lot of hearts, um, then, you know, they probably will be featured to the top, but it's pretty basic as you can see. So enjoy and please share your events in the description below. If you like the content so far on phase world, please hit subscribe. I'm so glad you're here. And remember we have new content being released every single week on zoom, on live streaming and building your business. So thanks so much. And I cannot wait to see you in a future video very soon.